It's Monday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with it, with me. Hello, Nima Akashat Zubi. How are you doing? I'm super, 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 super excited because I rested. And it's mm. 17 days to Ramadan. Mm -mm. counting down. Oh, that's true. Yes, yes. So I've been looking for ways to make sure that medical condition cannot stop this fast. <laughs> yes, so, so I got myself some... Um, Healthy tea. Black tea, uh, of it's course. Black but no, this is not my regular black tea. Uh, this is some tea that will help me settle all the insides. Nice. So like angosha. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Good, you? good to have you. Mm. Hello, Mariam. Hi. You're rocking your hair today. Yes. How are you doing? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> easy. Uh, but yeah. anyway, I have a I love easy. the color, though. Yeah. I love it's the color. It's beautiful. beautiful. Mm. I might copy this color. Yes. Yeah, I don't mind copying. Yes. That's a hard weekend. I'm fine, but I'm looking forward to um, my book reading tomorrow. I have another book reading ah, book nice. tomorrow. I'll talk about it, of course, after. Mm. Um, so this is just, I, I'm using the opportunity every time I talk about the book reading because I find that every time I go to a new school, it's almost like a new conversation for most mm. children and teachers about our environment, about vultures, about the role that we all play as being interconnected species so it's important um, for schools to get in touch with me mm. let's talk to our children and let's educate our children yeah, yeah. i was telling my kids over the weekend right after that uh, meeting but rather the other guy that came for the environment yeah. mm. i was telling them i was trying to use lion king that in the circle of life there are different parts and we're all mm. part of it you know mm. when you're in that conversation i learned like that i yeah. learned from from yeah. here that mm. you have to just pay attention to all our environment how are you doing, Obedjuli? I'm doing amazing. And today I'm like with my solar panel. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I did something like this, and people on Twitter said I had a very long <laughs> forehead. I had solar panel. So today I'm flaunting my solar panel. Yes. <laughs> and I'm yeah. proud of my solar panel. Yeah. It's your head. So, yes, yeah. it's my head, though. It's my father's head I carried. Uh -huh. um, but I'm very excited. Today is uh, Monday. I'm starting my group accountability coaching class today. Nice. It's going to be for 30 days on WhatsApp. Uh, students are ready. Uh, the lecturer is ready as well. Nice. So by this evening, we'll kick off the class. I have to go and take a few tips because I plan to also start my mentoring program very okay. soon. Okay. Oh. My book is ready. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> ready? You're yes! Yes! Right yes. About it. So uh, it's, uh, becoming the queen of talk TV. Uh, yeah. 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 And it's uh, Mariah yeah. Falaid Brown, host of Your View on TV. So I put TVC there. Yes. Put your <laughs> but yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, this is like, I put their name there. <laughs> but um, the thing is that um, I'm pretty excited about this. And I hope to also launch my mentoring program on that event. Yeah, I'm hoping awesome. to plan a book launch in the next few weeks. So people will be hearing about it. And uh, it can be a Google event. It's going to be very exclusive. It'll be 100 people max. Just to have a small intimate event. Yeah, I don't offend um, people of Lagos. Mm. Yeah, I can't have everybody. Mm. You know, it's just, but right. I, I like support. I, I can't afford to bring everybody. I'm not saying. Support with power. Well. I'm trying to do it as small as I can. If, now, if after the thing I'll come in here, I cannot allow power. <laughs> But right now, <laughs> let me just be very careful. I'm so grateful to God uh, for this book. Yeah, grateful for yeah, you too. know. I'm so happy. Congratulations! Oh, thank we you. We have thank two authors at the same time. Yes, well, I am a published author. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's on. Yeah, yeah, well, okay. I wouldn't. I don't. I don't do that yet. Okay. I'll mention it okay. eventually okay. when it happens okay, at the launch. All right. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Tinubu's pledge to Nigerians, I will not disappoint you. Nigeria's debt hits 50 trillion naira. Parties realign ahead Saturday's governorship polls. Man 26 riding bicycle from Katsina to <coughs> congratulate Tinubu in Lagos. Masha becomes, Masha becomes U.S. based G24 director. Rainstorm destroys 105 houses in Ikiti community. PDB leaders to picket INEC office over poll results. And obey Supreme Court judgment on Naira now, legal giant tells Buhari. Make a bit story, are we starting with? I have the major headline. So the president-elect, Bola Tinubu, yesterday returned to Lagos. And it's been reported by the nation as returning in a blaze of glory and he, that he described his certificate of return as a World Cup he has brought home. Mm. He went over to describe as he stormed the palace of the Eleko of Lagos, Obariwan Akiolu. Eleko of Eko. Of Lagos as Obariwan Akiolu. Thank the monarch and other communities, community leaders for their support and prayers. He said that... Um, um, they said the Oba hugged him and wished him an eventful tenure. And um, we also have that in Abuja, we have Alhaji Tanko Yekasai, who is an elder statesman, um, had, is urging the PDP and also the LP to work in conjunction and support um, um, the president-elect. Um, so the, the Oba says to the president-elect that he has done his best, best to serve Lagos and he has served excellently and so many other mm, uh, encomiums. Yes. And also he was received by the APC, um, um, Faithfuls, yeah. uh, at the airport when he came in. Mm. Okay. So I have a um, bit of um, reflective news. The debt management office has released our debts and we are close to 50 trillion in debt, according to the um, DMO, about 48 point something trillion, let's say 49 trillion. And um, according to them, our external debt is, has gone up as well to 18.2 trillion naira, mainly due to the depreciation of our um, naira against dollar. And um, in the last quarter, or the first two months of 2023, the government has also raised about 2.1 trillion uh, you know, in debt. So, you know, to carry out certain um, BA infrastructure or expenditures in the country. And we are looking at continuous increase and servicing of the debt. But we are doing well when it comes to servicing, according to them. But where we are now is about 50 trillion. I hope that this is reflective and we are not continuously sabotaging all the efforts of government because what they are borrowing this money to do, we can see some, and we have internal issues against them where people are attacking infrastructure mm. and bombing and, you know, destroying railways yeah. and all of that. So a uh, rainstorm <coughs> and destroyed properties worth millions of naira in Okeado, Okeako, Ikoli local government area of Ekiti State. Uh, they said the downpour was accompanied by heavy wild wind and that occurred on uh, Friday evening. The rainstorm destroyed over 105 residential buildings, including shops, as well as electric poles. Uh, some of the victims said the rain lasted for over two hours. It started normally, then started blowing off rooftops, destroying electric pole, and then subjecting the community to total blackout. According to one of the victims, Elder Elijah, he lamented that the rainstorm destroyed his property, and he was appealing to the state government for assistance said it was a way when he was called that um, the rooftop had the rain had taken out his rooftop and then rendered his family homeless so um the government went ahead to you know inspect the level of damage yesterday uh, governor biodu Oyebanji, and he condoled with the residents promising that they are going to assist them as pos as much as possible and also encouraged the landlords to make sure that they start planting trees they are also going to set up uh, something that will aid a lot of them to plant trees because when we have some of these trees it mitigates the effect of you know flooding so i have the story of the man riding a bicycle do you have that no i don't have it i didn't find it okay, did you find so it 26 year old gaddafi musa is a Kasina indigen and is, according to him, decided to ride his bicycle. He started on Wednesday. He has arrived in Lorin yesterday, um, down a 1,227 kilometers of road to Lagos in honor of uh, Mashua Jibola Metunubu, who won the election. He said that he, he started on Wednesday when he showed that most states were, he was winning most states and he decided to do this to honor him.
you know, I just hope that it doesn't end up like the one who tracked on Buhari's behalf. But, you know, I don't know what this is for, what implication it has. Anyway. Okay. Nice. I right, really don't appreciate it <coughs> like this. To the punch. <laughs> Presidential poll, PDP governor's leaders to protest at INEC today. So just shoot 15-year-old boy Keke operator dead in Lagos. Prepare for severe flood in Nema wants Nigerians. Tinubu visits Obakiolu. Promises not to disappoint Nigerians. Whitney, Lagos alleges lapses, says Christian remains shot. Akwabi Okalu orders begin battle for Senate presidency. Fuel forex subsidies removal will save Nigerian 10 trillion naira, says a report. And observers demand Rex frequency prosecution for alleged sabotage. So ahead of the, uh, let me take the story on Akwabi and others. So ahead of the uh, inauguration of the 10th National Assembly in June, some elected um, senators elect um, have begun lobbying for some of the highest positions. Um, aside from the Senate presidency, other positions like the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Deputy, Deputy Senate President, <coughs> and so sort of other principal um, offices. So uh, they're going to have like, the majority and minority caucuses. They're going to be looking for um, leaders of that. And, and so now there's a lot of lobbying going on because, as you know, they have, we have about um, 59. Um, senators, seats from the APC, we have uh, 30, I think it's 30, 29 from the PDP. We have about um, six from the LP and two and uh, across other parties. And the same goes for the House of Representatives. So, um, APC has about 162. PDP has 105. LP has 34 seats. NPP mm -hmm. has 18. Upcast. So it's a very, very, diverse. as I said, very diverse and colorful um, House of Representatives. So there's a lot of lobbying going on for principal. Um, positions and um, we'll see how that goes, but it's, it's, it's good to see how the well, democracy again is out, playing yeah. out. I have a follow up on Whitney uh, did, you know, uh, the Lagos state government had insisted and reiterated that the school remains shut yeah. for proper um, measures to be taken. That you know, number one is it is shut so that you know proper investigations can go on and uh, on in that, and that they also want to you know include parents, staff, and students of the school, giving them time to grieve. Uh, according to the State Commissioner for Education for Lasha Diadevisayo, and she also mentioned that the school, the Office of Quality of Education Quality Assurance in the state, will be meeting with the management of the school to ascertain adherence of child safeguarding policies. This is to ensure that all other students within the school are provided the safety that they uh, require going forward. So the school remains short. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Will they also and be the school in the field? Well, the statement yeah, where it happened. Where it they happened. Uh, that, 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 uh, the attitude of the school, you know, somebody had called me, one a former principal, a former staff of the Ministry of Education in Lagos, called me um, yesterday, Oyenike, I'm trying to remember her surname, and she complained about the facility where the inter-house portal happened, that, you know, I said, but because of the attitude of the school in denying initially, mm. nobody has put touch lights on that yes, facility. Wow. So she said that what they must have to provide a stadium for events like that is they must have man, um, she called it a particular thing about men who monitor the place on and on, even during the inter-house okay. sports as well. That's how it should be. All right, so let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our reviews. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women so if you catch the drift then you're on to something we will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table.
not just where, but who wouldn't you want to work with? Yes, that's on that angle. So Laifa had a very, very interesting... <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to work with who? Not the There's no judgement. No, uh, and I respect, oh, judge you I respect but we won't this judge certain you. type of people. But what I dislike so much is when they, they tend to come to work and then they pour all their... Resentments from On them. you. Is it me that offended you? <laughs> I'm not the one. I have no business. My just come out with you, pay me at the end of the month and let me go back to my house in peace and sleep. But when it comes to like divorced people, I cannot work with a divorcee. I can't see myself doing that. If I find out, if you can hide it or not, but if I find out. Why they are nice divorcees? I would Okay, we're still reviewing Punch. Yeah. Then it's still, in case okay. I have a story. The Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, not NEMA, Mr. <laughs> <Mr>. Ahmed, <laughs> has yeah, issued a warning of upcoming severe flooding this year, as indicated by predictions from relevant agencies. So a statement was issued by the agency, and um, this he disclosed at um, a two day experts technical meeting on the 2023 climate-related disaster preparedness and mitigation strategies in Abuja. And he said that um, they have earlier revealed in um, predictions that the annual flood outlook by the Nigeria Meteorological Agency and the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. And this flood disaster that happened last year is an eye-opener. However, the agency will now be spreading the warnings uh, and messages to states very early which they have started i took the same story uh last week said we've started early this year we're ready for early warning and early action we will bombard every citizen state and local government with the information as we want them to know that is uh know and take it very serious and will not keep quiet because we want them to know that they will be flood this year and they had mentioned earlier that the flood uh, predictions is across 178 local governments in 32 states and so people need to begin to do something about this now. I have a story as well in the pond. So we have the director of CPPE, which is the um, Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise, and he's disclosed that um, if if the incoming uh, that the incoming administration should lay emphasis <coughs> on moderating inflationary pressures, stabilizing exchange rates, and boosting the and um, boosting economic growth, he said that um, Nigeria is going to save about ten trillion naira annually by elimination of subsidies on PMS, that's petrol of course, and also foreign exchange. And if CBN2 was to remove the subsidy on foreign exchange, we will be able to save a lot of money. It's unlock more income from <coughs> revenue generating agencies to enhance efficiency of these operations, initiate budget reforms to ensure fiscal discipline, curb budget padding, curb duplication of projects and review the service wide and review service wide votes to ensure transparency. So this is just advice to incoming administration on the way forward economically for our nation. Daily Sun. US opens up on February twenty fifth polls. Any Google um, group threatens mayhem sponsored by politicians says IPUB. Are you Okoa lead black uniform protest at INEC headquarters today? Petro scarcity returns to Abuja. Yoruba monarchs urge Tinubu to use victory for Nigeria's unity and greatness. Article to INEC Chair, your promise for credible Kuba elections, medicine after death. NDLA NAB's Indian-bound businessman with 9.40 kg heroin at Lagos Airport. G20, Minister calls for Nigeria, AU inclusion, IMF World Bank reforms. Naira redesign confusion as CBN keeps mute over the Supreme Court's ruling. So the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, um, arrested a businessman, Mr. Kingsley Celestino, at the Motala Mohammed Airport. He was a 49-year-old young man um, on his way to India. Um, he was carrying 9.40 kilograms of heroin concealed in false buttons out of his um, traveling bags. According to them, um, he was traveling to, with a Guinean passport, international passport. Um, he claimed he deals in clothing businesses um, and travels between Nigeria and India. It was further established that he obtained the, Gu the Guinean international passport in Guinea-Bissau, where he had, he said his mother came from. Um, so, in the same vein, another 24-year-old man, um, I'm trying to get his name here, also was also nabbed at the international airport, at the Mutala Mohammed airport. 
he was carrying a 1.94 kg of skunk concealed in cream tubes. Mm. He was also trying to travel. And I mean, again, we've missed a bit of the NDLA because yeah. recently, but I'm, it's good to. Because of politics. Yeah, yes. politics has kind of. Um, but they've been working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, our residents in Abuja are facing a fresh round of biting petrol scarcity. Said many filling stations remain shut during the weekend for lack of products to sell. Uh, the few petrol stations that were open had a lot of. You know, cars queuing several meters away from the filling station. So, from Kubwa Central Business District to Garaki, Lube, the queues were really frightening. And um, said the development also made it possible for the black marketers to be selling fuel for 450 naira uh, per liter to you know customers. But and you know, uh, uh, they said um, one of the reasons we, they have this uh, fuel scarcity right now is because of the. Uh, past presidential and national assembly elections because there was a sort of restriction of movement and so tankers were not able to deliver but NMPC is assuring Nigerians especially people who are living in Abuja right now that they have fuel for them they said they have 47 day petrol sufficiency uh, said um, 2.1 billion liters of PMS in stock is already there 0 0.9 billion liters in all the land that will give us enough for this season so very soon the Queues will reduce when they have products. Very quickly, moving on to Vanguard. Supreme Court ruling on certainty as banks wait on CBN. Battle for State's Presidential National Assembly polls results raise stakes for governorship and assembly elections. Over 36 killed as herders attack Benue communities. Beaver Saturday's governorship poll might be postponed. Presidential polls fail to meet Nigeria's expectations, says U.S. Envoy. Telling both world leaders, to those extending our friendship, I offer mine in return. Yakubu's promise of credible government uh, polls, medicine after death, says Atiku. Certificate of return, like World Cup trophy, to me, says Tinubu. Polls dispute, Oshaba wants against triggering tribal and religious crisis. Okay, which so, headline. So, yes, on Friday, the Supreme Court ruled that, you know, the old Naira notes and the new Naira notes must go. Lie, uh, side by side to the 31st of December this year. And so, Vanga I just went around the town to some banks and the banks are saying they're waiting for a CBN circular because they are not answerable to the Supreme Court. They say they are answerable to the CBN. And so they're waiting for a CBN circular to instruct them on what to go. Some banks are saying we don't even have all the new notes. Some are saying, although they are all anonymously speaking in this report, some are saying we have the new notes, but we are not answerable to anybody else but the CBN. Until circular comes out, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. And financial analysts are insisting obey the Supreme Court. They are also calling on the, uh, the president to instruct the CBN to obey the Supreme Court order. I was hoping we would hear from the federal government today. In fact, that Friday evening, I kept saying to my neighbors, don't worry, this we'll evening, hear from because I believe that government respects us. I said this evening, President Muhammad Bari will just address us. No, 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 just wait. <laughs> Can you write him a letter? In fact, I should. <laughs> I should. Why <laughs> can't I? <laughs> All right, so the president-elect, Bharati Nambu, said yesterday he was ready to work with world leaders who extend an arm of friendship for him. He was actually saying that he was overwhelmed by the number of congratulatory messages he received pointing from world leaders. He mentioned United States, France, UK, and many other countries. And he says that um, they have they demonstrated the important role Nigeria plays mm -hmm. in the world. Um, he also described it as an encouraging mm -hmm. sign that the rest of the world was interested in, in the partnership with Nigeria, and he was um, <clears throat> pretty elated. He said, I'm deep, I deeply appreciate the congratulatory messages from all over the world. The message of goodwill and solidarity have been so overwhelming to me to mention everyone by name. So, I guess that's, that's the story. Any other story in Vanguard? Let's move on quickly. Now, uh, the point. Who has a story in point? Okay. Yeah. Bankers fear fresh bashing amid CBN silence. Election controversy, no one has ever become Nigerian president through court judgment, says lawyers. Fears of voter apathy heightened ahead of governorship assembly polls. Uncovered, real reasons married, co married cop killed concubine and self inquirer. Nigeria's cement industry battles rising operational costs because declining margins. Which one do you have, Maya? Yes, I have this also a follow up on the story I've taken about the cop that shot. Uh, a lady who was supposed to have been his lover, they said. So the, it's an update on why he did it. Um, they said that he, uh, uh, Michael Olalere, was a 
was a married man with two daughters, but was in a relationship with Uluato since Cecilia um, Bamidele, who has a daughter, and they had been they had a relationship which friends have said was a violent one. He used to beat her and accuse her of infidelity over and over again, mm. and they had. They had evidence of bruises and bandages all over her over a period of time. They said on this particular day, he had accused her of, you know, seeing someone else. And, you know, she, that they thought, that it looked like she was running away from him. She had quickly run to her daughter's school. That's where the um, gruesome murder suicide happened. They said she went to pick up her daughter. He had been looking all around for her, saw her. He had a cutlass with him, actually, they said at first. When he saw her, he shot her three times in the chest and then he puts the gun to his throat and kills himself and uh, to think that this is a married man first of all you are committing adultery on top of everything and then you're not feeling heartbroken the person wants to leave you you still chase mm. the person down with gun you're not feeling heartbroken <laughs> Okay, the Nigerian Tribunal last paper this morning pity mm -hmm. to protest as INEC direct members to dress in black many homeless as rainstorm blows roof off building in Ikiti Bandit skilled DPO sergeant vigilante abduct women in Zamfara. Labour Party no you adopts Makinde. Atiku to Yakubu, your promise to credible for credible um, governorship polls is medicine after death. Tinubu promises not to disappoint Nigerians. February 25 presidential election failed to meet Nigerians' expectations, says US Ambassador. Okay, so I have the story. The Labour Party in the West State has declared the support for the incumbent, um, Governor Sheyi Makinde, for Saturday's coming elections. The party chairman, Mr. Tunji Sadiq, said that the party has resolved to use its entire structure to support Governor Makinde because um, they are, his ideology aligns with theirs and they will give him the support across the 33 local governments in your state. Um, yeah, so that's, 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 that's a story. Any other story in Chibi? Yeah, so uh, bandits uh, on Sunday... Sunday morning attacked Maru police station in Maru headquarters of Maru local government area of Zamfara State. They killed a DPO, an inspector, a vigilante, and also abducted some women in the process. So the DPO Kazim Rahim, the police inspector Rabi Omar, and vigilante member were confronting the hoodlums when they in a gun duel when they walked into uh, the police station and then they got injured and died in the process. It's just a very painful story. Um, the story has been confirmed, and um, investigations have been launched to go and chase out uh, those bandits who carried out this attack. Uh, it was very funny that the DPU and the inspector did not want to run away. They were really trying to defend uh, their station when they lost their lives. It's just painful. Okay, so that is all we can take on Front Page Review. When we come back, move on to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. I can ask questions if I want to ask questions. And if it's something that I saw coming, I may not even ask questions. I may just... I may even tell you I saw this. What, if, what if it's in person? Mm -hmm. But then, would it make a difference where? So, like, this person might just say, you people can just be on third me language. <laughs> on a bike <laughs> and the person say babe I cannot do it again and you lose range <laughs> so what would change what would change the scenario for, like does it matter where do you want to have like a fancy dinner like the film you were mentioning no, 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 like, about finally, and then, right. or do you want to be on the street no carry me no fancy dinner or you might just on the road for treadmill <laughs> <laughs> or you're not a joke. Don't tell you, you're loose for your web. Now I don't turn at him tell that. <laughs> so what, which would it be? Because I'm like, in person, you have the closure that you want and a few injuries. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> that, that's one place. It could be inside the car. You can sit inside the car. Why car? Why not bike? Who will be driving? Why bike? Who will be no, driving no, at this car point? The car will be stationary. Pray I'm not the, the one driving. The <laughs> car will be stationary. <laughs> because I'll go, I'll go mass at it. You can't be told me like me. I'm going to drive there water where we're You must be considered. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member Dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, 
Afrobeat historian in her right and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anifula Fokuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger, yeah, take it, take it, take it. Yeah, today, yeah, ginger, yeah, ginger, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Ha. Hmm. I know, I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah, wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? He said 73. He said 75. Fellas, I was wasn't even born to 75. So, will I drink out? Eh? You go drink out. Take, take, take. Make I go make I help you. Rush and rush and rush and. No be half. Which half? You will make me drink. I'll give you a hint. Light in in all. Nepa, Nepa Road. Ah! <laughs> Nepa oh. Road. Nepa Road. In a Ah ah. First of all, my brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah hey, Omi Omo fella, Omi Omo Anikola Pokuti. Oh no, baby, can you kick it? It's my audio song, it's not my audio hey, song. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>for staying with us so last friday the supreme court nullified the ban on the use of old 200 500 and 1000 naira banknotes as legal tenders according to the reports the old banknote should remain valid and be legal tenders until december 31st now 
to join the conversation on this because many people are concerned that since Friday up until now, we're yet to hear from either the CBN or even our president reaffirming the Supreme Court's judgment. People are concerned about spending some of the Naira notes. Others have even taken all their old notes to the bank. And they are wondering if the banks will be willing to um, use the old Naira, use the, continually use the old Naira notes. That's our conversation this morning. What are your thoughts on this um, Supreme Court ruling? And um, how do you think you prefer that the government's response to this? Do you think that it should allow CBN, that the CBN should defy the Supreme Court is drilling. Let's hear your thoughts on this. You can call us on 081270-53687. You can also call us on 0913907694. Tweet to us at TV. So can I please hashtag your view TV so we can read your tweet? Maybe we'll be a guest later on today to shed some light on this. But first, we'd like to hear Nigerians' thoughts and views on this. It's your view. Let it count. Um, Nima, let me start with BC. We'd like to start. Um, we haven't heard anything. I think it was you that started in the paper. Let me start with you. Mm -hmm. You are saying that you've not heard from our president. You wanted to hear from the president at least to say something concerning um, the Supreme Court judgment. What are your thoughts on okay, the so silence so far? Even though I was waiting to hear, hear from the president, and you know, we're just discussing pedestrianly as laymen on the judgment. As usual, my business people around the house were saying, I cannot take it, or I don't want problem, or what did the president say? And I kept saying, it's a Supreme Court order. <laughs> it's not, they don't, we don't need president. It takes enforcement immediately. And I do not see the president as someone who would abuse a Supreme Court order, even though he abused ah, the yeah, 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 I'm looking at the permanent. This is a final order. This is not a ruling. This is not a temporary and interim order. This is a, rule, uh, a final order on what should go forward. And so we'd expect that the president will be the first since he could not even decide himself what was economic. Now, he wasn't well advised. I would say that with my bold chest, that, mm -hmm. you know, the present CBN governor is the, is the worst in the history of Nigeria. The CBN governors. He could not, he could not, he has not been the best of advisors. And so the Supreme Court, even though they agreed in that judgment that they are not interfering in any monetary policy which doesn't concern the Supreme Court, but in where it contravenes the Constitution, like where it goes against the fundamental rights of Nigerians, so access and easily switch. You know, the, the complexities that they added to the, to the monetary policy at the time, reducing, uh, limiting uh, withdrawals, yeah. so, uh, retrieving people's currencies, and refusing to, you know, issue new ones, or uh, not being capable to do it at the time you causing a hardship just generally on Nigerians was what the Supreme Court had to be forced to rule on. They would usually have just ruled that, you know, preliminary objections, they do not have, mm -hmm. you know, a jurisdiction on this area. Mm -hmm. But because of the way it was done, you gave them jurisdiction, they were compelled to then decide on mm -hmm. behalf of uh, the executive what should go forward. And so I'm waiting to hear from him. I expect him to be a leader right. and do the needful but, yeah, uh, but, but you know, now that uh, the, we have a president-elect, mm. elections have passed. Mm -hmm. President Biden doesn't have really owe anybody any money before. There's still the, I'm not saying he doesn't. Mm. Mm. All I'm saying is, you know how we are, our thinking. Mm. Mm. Yes, he yes. does. It's his job to do that. But you know, before even it's because of elections. Oh, they did this because of elections. Now the elections have passed. Now, is <laughs> that We have suffered, Molayo, waiting for the election because we don't want to see people using money to buy election. Yeah. Election has finished. Election has ended. We need money to do our businesses. Exactly. And I'm even uh, reading in some of the papers that the banks themselves don't even have the old Naira notes to dispense. CBN hasn't given them the old Naira notes. One, CBN, CBN is already. silent on this matter too. No, because what is the plan of the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria? towards Nigerians and Nigerian businesses. I think we need to start asking these questions. What is your plan? Uh, you, you, are, you are saying you are trying as much as possible to curb inflation. But what you are doing is causing more inflation. Yes. I took the story, I think, uh, last week or two weeks ago, when they gave the statistics of how inflation has risen from December last year to this point. So what exactly is your game plan? Elections have finished. Are you waiting till the governorship that's happening? Yeah. Uh, it's counterproductive. That Nigerians need money to be able to move around and doing their businesses. I've not been able to do some of my businesses because there's no cash. Mm. And now, the Central Bank of Nigeria is acting as if it's bigger than the Supreme Court. Because who do we listen to? We need cash. Mm. Simple and short. Yeah. yeah, let me come to you, BC. I mean, I think, I think that's... We no, finished the... the, 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 the what is yeah. there to say? We have heard from the Supreme Court, but then we have to be 
um, realistic. This is not a country and administration that has proved, that has shown that it has respect for the Supreme Court. Mm. Yeah, true. We already have too many <laughs> examples, examples to mm. show. And so what we can do as Nigerians is just wait. Um, as we know, some other states, the governors have taken it upon themselves to tell their um, indigents or residents to go ahead and spend their old Naira notes yeah. and then with the incoming administration maybe something might change but it would really be it would really be a taint on the administration of another taint on the administration of um, our current president if he doesn't say anything about it if his attitude is well I'm almost out you guys yeah. handle yourselves I think that especially now towards the end you should be seen to be doing everything that you yeah. can to make things you know right transition I mean, properly when even though many of us complained about this monetary policy and how it was affecting our daily lives and our businesses, some people were proud of it. They felt that this was the president showing, um, showing courage in the face of what we would normally be a flawed um, election, um, trying to stop vote buying and all. We had the EFC um, um, boss who came and said that they saw an improvement when it comes to vote buying mm -hmm. because of this policy. So finish it up now that you've had a judgment from the Supreme Court. Let us even hear what you have to say. Let's even hear if you say, you know what, Supreme Court, I don't even have your time. I'm not going to listen to you. Then Nigerians would know what to say about you. And it's an opportunity to show leadership for Emefele. Emefele has really had bad press in the last few weeks. This is a really good opportunity for him to buy back, buy back his reputation. Just come back and say, based on Supreme Court's ruling, and therefore reversing the policy. You know, what you do is that, you buy some respect from the guard from Nigeria. And then he has to go to the house. No, you, 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 you have to eat the house. At some point, you have to come down from his high horse. Yes. Are you serious? The almighty Emefili, the one who thought that Naira and currencies were printed to be locked up in vaults and shouldn't be in circulation. The one who said, if you, we need to withdraw the money in circulation, the one in circulation is too much, and so that's what is causing corruption. And so and I want to come your skin now and bring it back. I was listening to an expert over the weekend, and I was, my eyes was opening. This expert says he lived in Kenya and that all the countries, India had done the same yes, thing. Mm -hmm. And they even had to print a and higher denomination. Yeah. Wait now. Wait now. And that they even had to print a higher denomination for their people. But what he sees here is that the CBN governor is an uh, almighty mm, alpha. He cannot do mm, mistakes. Mm, mm. You know, he did a policy that it will be anti-economy. Economic in any country in the world. And he as a CBN governor. And as I looking into the profile of the CBN governor, maybe he studied economics. What did I didn't see you. What did he what study? Did he study? Uh, I think he saw the banking and finance. I'm going to check it again. <laughs> 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 no, well, I'm just saying. Yes, it's because we had Soludo who was a professor mm. yes. of economics. We had uh, um, yeah. SLS. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when your tongue come, come, only you say that businesses should shut down. You only you made, made it possible for somebody to work inside Lagos, mm. a co market, mm. on a weekday and be able to work. Mm. In the past, hey. you cannot work there on the, even on a Thursday when they say everybody. Because businesses the are shut. Business, business. Hey, businesses yeah, are shut. Now you can now stroll. You can quickly spot the street you are looking for. Let me let me let me let me, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we we'll open our phone lines yes, and get yeah. messages from Nigerians because today many people are still scared of of spending the old cash. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, please help welcome to the show, La General, the one and only Pere Egui. Which of the following is false about teeth? Breed, breed we again. are born with 20 primary teeth. Hmm. Teeth are the hardest substance in the body. Teeth are the strongest bones in the body. Teeth is not a bone, actually. Teeth, uh, teeth uh, can self-repair. The strongest bone in the body. No, teeth is not a bone. Final answer. Teeth is not a bone. <laughs> you know what came to my head now? That sound. Me, 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 me. Cricket. <laughs> So, editor, you can put that cricket sound there. It's very just, it's, you can still put it down too. When 
was the first Gulda Ultimate Search. Editor? Don't put any cricket sound. I'm talking, I'm talking. Okay, Per. How many times has Ghana qualified for the World Cup? <laughs> Five times. Hey, bro, you can't do that now. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Why are you like this? Uh, yeah. This is your team. Small, small play yeah, now. They, they, they will not Somebody be cannot play with you again. They will not be impressed though. The team that you're supporting and Ghana, Ghana with. will be alright. Yeah, that's last. Charlie? <laughs> Cheers, Charlie. <laughs> Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw ether material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Not just where, but who wouldn't you want to work with? Yes, that's on that angle. So, like, if I had a very, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to work with who? Not the There's judgment. no judgment. No, and I respect, oh, don't judge you I respect but we won't this judge certain you. type of people. But what I dislike so much is when they, they tend to come to work and then they pour all their resentments on them. you. Is it me that offended you? <laughs> I'm not the one. I have no business. My just come out with you, pay me at the end of the month, and let me go back to my house in peace and sleep. But when it comes to like divorced people, I cannot work with a divorcee. I can't see myself doing that. If I find out, if you can hide it or not, but if I find out. What if they are nice divorcees? I would just. What if be they are nice? Okay, now it depends. If you are nice, cool. But if you are the type that you don't know how to keep your anger to yourself, you always you always pour it on somebody. Well, I'll just drop my resignation letter. No matter the amount you're paying me. So you're <laughs> more passive aggressive people. Yeah, I can't do it. I'm so sorry. Oh, definitely. And I cannot work with stingy people. Ah, see this one. Because you cannot be passing me in the morning after and I can say, Oh, ha, ah, yeah, I'm okay. Oh yeah, take hundred naira. Take ten K. Take fifteen K. It doesn't you don't have to be my sugar daddy or sugar mommy. What, what, see, the way you treat others is the way they will treat you outside. Yeah. And if you cannot treat your workers well, they are not a good boss. If you cannot be dashing me small small thing or giving me donuts when I'm when I'm working, you are not a good boss. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. So we're still discussing this um, pronouncement by the Supreme Court. And uh, we're just discussing our own different stories. And you can call us on the numbers on your screen, 081 can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. Over the weekend, my mother-in-law went to church and she wanted to give offerings. So she gave the old Naran <laughs> She's living that old world. <laughs> So somebody now somebody now they were now called back because they saw her, they saw her put it in. So they just saw her and going back, they don't go to I came back to tell me the mommy gave the old note. That's what I said. Why would you give the other? I said, That's what I have. Now. Exactly. So we've got judgment and said, yeah, But they have to take it to the bank. And I'll take it back and I'll give her the yeah. meaning. But it's because we don't know yet. And this is the confusion out there. People don't even know. My mom wants to spend money. She she did. <laughs> she came to go and pick up her clothes already. She gave Kokiji the other. <laughs> <laughs> so we're still confused. That's why we need CBN 
and uh, the uh, Buhari president to come out and say, okay, yes, the Supreme Court of the Judgment has its stance, and we are all going to adhere to it. That's all Nigerians are waiting because I trust these banks. Mm. Hmm. Even with Supreme Court judgment, until they hear from their, yes. their, 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 their regulator, they won't do anything. anything yeah. and that's why I'd like to take a that um, the CBN governor says something about this. Because I don't understand the reason for the silence. Is it going to consult before coming out to make a statement? Or what exactly are they waiting for? Um, I, I think um, we should still keep talking about this. Keep yeah calling experts to give their own opinion on this. I don't know if the civil society should start uh, shouting about this right now because it's time that the CBN governor says, at least just say something, let's know if you want to obey or you don't want to obey so that Nigerians can move ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the network, the banking uh, network, we still have issues. Money is still hanging. I yeah, sent a fee to my uh, 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 children's teachers. I sent double-double. Yes, now. Yes, no doubt. Thank God that they were honest enough to tell me and they sent it back. I'm sure some other people would have collected the money and I don't know where money is going now from. I mean, then there's, one, did you hear then the, there's the also one yeah. that opened over the weekend. This popular payment solution point, 2.9 billion. Yes, yeah. lots okay. away. Yes. Let me, let me hold you for a second. Yakub is holding for a minute. Good morning, Yakub. Thanks for calling this morning. I did that. Yeah, good morning, Maria. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My first time pass opportunity um, after I tried to learn if you want the election. Now, I want to use this opportunity to give glory to God and my dear Allah, and then uh, to congratulate him as well. Truly, uh, it's been something million things have been revealed for. And then I hope this time around, I hope it's not going to be done. So, now, come to a major issue. I had an uh, office saying that he should come out to say, maybe in order to to make the court on us to make the view. I think this time around, we have no option, we have no option, because the Supreme Court is the highest court in the world. You have to obey that court order, and then the court judgment has to be. If you imagine, even if you redeem the female, I I I even to redeem the interest of people that die, all because they don't have that understanding. So say they are up to be like that, that says they die, and then they have already called. They may have a lot of people to that. Apart from that, if public president should not allow a to take a if you don't allow a to run away, it has a lot of pressure to have it in the park because you know, Mr. President has received our first vote. I have to make my favor of Mr. President in person of Mr. President Mohamed Dubai. This time I left, I also put my favor of Mr. President and then I believe. And then I trust I trust Mr. President to you don't go do the needful. The public president already said that he's against this very particular, particular uh, 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 thing. And the don't have to come and get with him and then let people come and then go their cash. It is, it is, it is. Thank you very much, Jacob. Yes, Mary, we're going to say um, Yes, so for me, you know, I've mentioned this before. What happens when there's a Supreme Court judgment or order and... Um, we have just silence from the executive. I mm. feel like we have a loophole there mm. where we now keep Nigeria suspended. Nobody knows where to go. And I would like to see our National Assembly, you know, come up with policies that can cover this going forward because we always have situations like this, especially being Nigerians. We always find ways. I just need... It's, it's important for Nigerians to know. Let's say after a court order has been given and we don't get the proper response from our executive, what can be done by the National Assembly in 24 hours, in 48 hours. What should Nigerians do? Because it just seems like we have a government or a government that's not listening or a silent government and it does not make sense, especially when it has to do with something that affects the whole country yeah. as a whole, affects the livelihood of people, affects their businesses. It makes no sense that there should be silence, no matter how short the so time is. So that's why there has to be a bigger ideology. You know how, you know how Americans have the Uncle Sam? It kind of mm. holds them in check. Mm. It has to be somebody that says, well, this is who we are. And somebody was willing to build a system. And how do you build a system? You build the rule of law. You, you, you build a system by saying, allowing the system to be bigger than you, mm -hmm. allowing the system to supersede your personal, your personal opinions and thoughts. So that's why we need, the, the only way we can move forward is when leadership shows example why not ask of these kinds of... Um, why not ask um, for perfection yeah. on the part of our appointees? Because the CBN governor, whether he likes it or not, now we appoint him. Is an appointee of Nigeria, and so it's, it's supposed to be serving me and including other Nigerians. Mm. But we're not asking for perfection. We're not saying that you cannot make mistakes, you're infallible. 
We are saying that when you do, and you see the effects of the humble pie. Mm. It's the humble pie. You've oh. seen the effect of it. Yeah. You've seen how it has affected businesses. You mopped up money out of circulation. Mm -hmm. Some businesses, not crumbled. some, crumbled. A lot of businesses crumbled. You saw the inflation figures. This is nine taken for you. They were going up higher and higher. You are a that's why I say he's not an economist. Let me Even take then, let me take his profile. Larry apologized. Let me take his profile. Our president apologized to the president. Well, he still apologized. Yeah, at least, well, at least he apologized. Emefele attended Ansarudin Primary School and Maryland Comprehensive Secondary School in Are you Lagos. serious? I'm not joking. Ansarudin. Before, before proceeding to the University of Nigeria in Suka for his tertiary education. Is he a Muslim? No. no. Well, Ansarudin was a public school. They were oh, nice. Them. I like that. You obtained a bachelor's degree in banking and finance. Mm -hmm. Finishing on top of on, uh, on one of the top students in his class in oh. 1984. And wow. then after NYSC, he has a master's degree in finance. Okay. He also is an alumnus of the executive education at Stanford University, Harvard, Watson B School of Business. He's a 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 Good morning, ladies. Yes, Good sir. Morning. morning, sir. Good morning, morning. Katina. Hmm? Good morning, from Katina. From Katina. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I want to thank you, beautiful ladies, for you for the honesty, thank for you. your sincerity. We are grateful to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. On this issue, you know Nigeria. You see, it's not the fault of the of the the school. It's the fault of the Nigeria. The Nigeria is now the president, the coach. After the court has said something, since Friday. Come and see, come and see the bank account. I was taking my children to the, to the school. Yeah, this one, you will win for people. People are confused. Wow. People are still confused. Let them come out, tell us, I'm not, I'm obeying Supreme Court. I'm not, I'm not obeying Supreme Court. The, the Supreme Court is not that anybody. If they are very in their judgment. But what is happening? What is, the presidency too has not said anything. Uh, Malami has not said anything. He's said anything more than, more powerful than us. So 200 million Nigeria people are dying. People are crying. People are suffering. Please, look at this. Call him out. Call him out. That's what I'm doing, sir. That's what we're doing. Sir. Yes, so we're so the the, the uh, CBN governor is in tandem with the president. They are working together. Yeah, that. One and the same. We, one, one and the same. You cannot say it's the CBN governor's fault. He has a strong backing from the president. And so we are calling out the president to say that your people are suffering. Mm. If there's any iota of um, uh, fatherhood that is still left oh, in you, yes. Empathy. You need empathy. <laughs> you need to listen to your people. Your people are suffering. Your people are, businesses are crumbling. We already have issues where the government, as much as possible, is not even um, supporting a lot, especially the MSMEs. Not supporting a lot of them to stand. People are struggling to do something so that they are not idle to hold that thing down. And now it is crumbling. People are going back to beg for food. Mm. I went to Alabado yesterday for Sunday service mm. and some of my younger friends in the area came to see me uh, saying they were hopeful that I would give them cash. cash. Mm -hmm. This is where I've missed you. We can't come and see you. We don't have transport fare. I've not been able to sell my clothes. Aww. I've not been able to sell. I felt so bad. So the little one I had, I had to show you. I think it's yeah. 2000 You know, just yeah. for people to be okay. These are people who are hustlers. Mm. They are girls that are not into prostitution. Mm. They are selling. They are making hair. Mm. They are doing everything mm. possible. Some mm. of them have children already and they have mm. de deadbeat dads. Mm. And so they are hustling to keep yeah. their lives moving. Yeah. And then this cash now yeah. is... And I know, without any doubt in my mm. mind, that most of this, like... The, uh, the president will not say now that he needs cash. He will oh, definitely have cash. Uh, the governor of the CBN will not say he needs cash. He def we don't have the same problem. So please, mm. sir, we are begging you. If you love Nigerians, you mm. still have small love for us. Yeah. Answer us. Tell yeah. us what is happening. Yeah, like, say, I don't burn the money finished. Mm. Tell us say, we don't burn our money. We don't burn our money. We are trying to do something to uh, maybe print yeah. more old notes yeah. and send back to so, 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 we're on different levels and the other the level where i'm coming from is the fact that we need to see this as an opportunity to uphold the rule of law again yes. you've been seen in the recent times to be disobeying the rule of law please use this opportunity to at least let my because i remember when i went to the uk where they when i went to a store and the lady refused to collect my cash because they had changed the notes and she said she, she, can't, she can't take this old note 
And so that's why I have. So sorry, you can't take it. So I went, I was really upset. I went out. out. The guy told me what happened, asked me. He said, you can go back. And I was, was telling me the law. Right. And you are entitled to use that. No, go back there and Let demand. That. Tell her. Tell her this. Yeah. And I went back there. And, and they looked up. She didn't answer me. She called her manager. I spoke to her manager. And the manager allowed me to pay. Yeah. Because when, when the people know the law, mm. they are able to uphold it and they use it. That's the same thing here. The Supreme Court has spoken. And we people like, we look at people to enter the bank this morning and tell the teller. The Supreme Court said, you have to give me note and collect this note for me. I think that's something we, we can be we can, we able to do. Well, and that's get to that level. You know, that's the problem. We, you can know the law and then go into the bank and insist that you're... But here we have the poor bankers who are now caught in a, in, yeah. a, in a dilemma. Should we listen to this customer that we know this is the customer's right? Is the customer's hard and you know, Do you know this conversation is so funny? Because it's your hard end money, money that you're being used. Yeah. yeah, so the customer's hard end money, and then you know that if you don't, you have a CBN that yeah. one day will put you on TV and say that you're the one not doing what you're meant to do and cause oh. um, problems. Well, well, I, well, let me put you on over a second. So I have a call from a professor from Oweri. Professor Laz, I'm sorry, I have to take this call. Good morning, sir. Are you there? I'll come back to you. Yeah, good morning. You're live from Enugu. Thanks for calling us. Yeah, um, I want to thank you for this, uh, bringing up this uh, discussion on the uh, impact uh, directives. Okay, thank you. I want to thank you for bringing up this uh, uh, issue of uh, Supreme Court judgment. And, um, well, I want to tell you I'm a fan of this program. I love the passion you have in your discussion. And uh, this is the first time I'm telling you. Thank you. Thank um, you. Um, confirming this uh, issue, I think um, we are calling out the, the one person. The CBN uh, is not supposed to be the right people to know. Uh, we should be calling on the president. Uh, uh, the, the Muhammad is very. Libya was not a key to that. Libya was not a party to this matter. The letter in the house will help us come here. Um, it was the federal government that was taking the case. And um, the judgment was given against the federal government, and not Libya. So I think we need to redirect our energy towards the president so that the president can. Mm. Uh, direct and not the CBA. As I speak, <laughs> this thing came in part of the interview. I know that she said, and I thought it may be, maybe, uh, uh, yeah. it will tell me where, where. But the truth is that it is the federal government that we should be directing our energy towards and mm -hmm. not to the CBA. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Lars. Want to finish up your point, Mary? Before we enter the break? Yes, I was just saying that um, we had the bankers and mm. banks, you know, that were in such a precarious situation a few weeks back because um, they had gone into the banks and yeah. they said that they were holding on to cash, even though this was cash that they said they are holding on because there's a limited amount you have asked them to give to customers. I just want to say that um, we know the law mm. personally. But there are just different levels to it. So who's going to apply it and who's not going to apply it? Who would end up paying? Who would end up serving the punishment for lack of, you know, um, for implementation or enforcement? I'm going back to my other point, which is what do we do in the interim? All right, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. I can ask questions if I want to ask questions. And if it's something that I saw coming, I may not even ask questions. Mm. I may just... You, I may even tell you I saw this what if, what if it's in person? Mm -hmm. But then, would it make a difference where? So, like, this person might just say, you people can't just be on third me language. <laughs> on a bike. <laughs> and the person say, babe, I cannot do it again. And you lose range. <laughs> so what would oh change God. what would change the scenario for, like 
it does it matter where do you want to have like a fancy dinner yeah, like the film you were meant no, 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 to be no, like funny or be right or do you want to be on the street no carry me no fancy dinner or you might just on a run for treadmill or you not a job you tell you you lose for your web now I don't turn attempted more than so what which would it be because I'm like in person, you have the closure that you want and a few injuries. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> that, that's one place. It could be inside the car. You can sit inside the car. Why car? Why not bike? Who will be driving? Why bike? Who will be no, driving no, at this car point? will be stationary. Pray I'm not the, the one driving. <laughs> the just be pray. stationary. Because I'll go, I'll go master. Say, you can't be told me like me. I'm going to drive near water. Wait, wait. <laughs> all of, all you must be configured. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anipula Pokuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger! Yeah, take it, take it, take it. Yeah, yeah, today, ginger me, yeah, ginger today me. we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Ha. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah. Wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1975. He said 73. He said, I said 75. 75. I couldn't. Fellas wasn't even born to 75. Damn. So will I drink out? Ah, eh? you can drink out. Oh. Take, 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 make I go make I help you. Russian, Russian, Russian. No be half. Eh? Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Uh, light in in no. Nepa Nepa Road. <laughs> Nepa Road. Nepa Road. In a Ah ah. First of all. My brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah hey omi omo fella omi omo anikula kpokuti ono pe kini kekele. It's by all song. It's not by all song. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate Thanks for staying with us. So to enlighten us more on this conversation is Barrister Wale Ogunade. He's going to be sharing more thoughts on the Supreme Court's ruling. Good morning sir, are you there? Good morning, ma. How are you, ma? Very well. So, Nigerians are quite concerned because this government many times have dis disobeyed the Supreme Court's ruling on, on various occasions. And they're, they're worried that this most recent one, when Nigerians are hoping 
that the pronouncement of the Supreme Court judgment will be ahead across all banks and the economy. Many people are worried that it might not be. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think, um, how do you think this will play out in your own view? Well, in my own view, the Supreme Court judgment, the law in ruling is the judgment. And so, really, the judgment is just a soft landing to the government, okay. which is uh, the government of the central bank and the federal government. Because generally, the court stated it that the CBN has no power over the money. It is your money. The CBN and the banks are just trustees. Yes. And it's at, uh, such, uh, the, the CBN Act, particularly Section 4, uh, 20, is clear uh, that the people deposit their money and the bank will be obliged to release the money to them whenever they demand for it. Once all, everything is complete in terms of maybe your signatures and in compliance with your mandate. And much as that is, the, 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 the various uh, steps taken in, uh, for the Naira swap was not really done appropriately. And we start, we know that indeed the policy itself was done in a hush hush way against a particular candidate because they don't want that candidate to come up or even the politicians to, to spend money. Yes, the elections have now come and they have gone. But with the election coming and going, I don't see anything disturbing both the federal government and CBN now either of course obeying the court order in terms of releasing both the old notes and printing more money to be in circulation. To an extent, maybe it's enough really hard, uh, has a, a, a non serial motive. But would accept by now, the banks will start rolling out the money. I have been told on the, on the uh, grapevine that they are, they, the old notes have been bonds. But I know not all have been bonds because as of two, two last week or upper week, I, I ran into some little cash uh, a client brought to me and I had to take it to the bank. And I know when I went to the bank, too, I saw some, uh, some people who brought their old notes there. And it means that there are still some old notes in, uh, in the bank code, which we should release out. The bank, that the central bank and the federal government have no business to pay this order because it goes to the roots of our foundation. People suffer because we need money. We are no more in the butter system. We have to put trade by butter. What we need and what we use is money, either old or new. The Supreme Court is the highest court on the land. It has made its judgment, and its judgment is going to be followed without any reservation. And of course, they cannot sit in judgment. What Warri did the last time on February 10th was to sit in judgment over the judgment of the Supreme Court. And I like the way the Supreme, the Supreme Court came heavily on him, that it should not assume the role of the dictator. They, are, they have submitted themselves to the jurisdiction of the court, and the court has ruled. They, all they can do is to now do an appeal even to the, to the Supreme Court. Right. Not to now take the laws into their hands. Exactly. All right, let me get a few questions with you. Okay, sir. Um, what would you advise uh, Nigerians, ordinary Nigerians, who still have some of these uh, old notes to do? do? Do you advise us to insist on spending the money and the shop owners or the market women, do you insist that they will take this money? Do, should we just go ahead and start using the ones we have in circulation already or still wait till we hear from uh, the CBN governor or the president? Fairness, the court has made an order. And the order is that the old note ceases to be a legal tender December 31st, 2023. And that is the law. And there is nobody that can alter it, not the governor of the central bank, not the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The, pro the appropriate authority to make that law and order is the Supreme Court. Mm. That is what section 1, point, section 1 of section 3 says. It gives uh, all persons and authority must obey the, the dictates of the Constitution. And the authority to make each such order is the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court has so ruled. Subject to an appeal, this other order made on, on the, uh, on the 20, 28th of, January, of February stands. And that order, by virtue of that judgment, is that legal, the whole legal tender continues. And where am I going? It's not the uh, issue of uh, uh, auction. It's an order. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an old note. What a legal tender is a document or a money you use. Step to a market, you give to somebody, the person takes it. He has no power to reject. Mm. That is the position of the law. So nobody has the power to reject. So given an old note, you take it. 
you are giving a new note, you take okay. it because it's legal tender. That's okay. ordered by the Supreme Court of Nigeria. That's the highest court in the land. Anybody, in fact, anyone who wants to do anything contrary is to be held in contempt. You okay. can call a policeman to arrest the person who is refusing to take the money. Wow. All right. Yes, my own is. <laughs> my question is <laughs> we hear you legally. No one has the right to reject. Yes. It's still legal tender. But then this is Nigeria. We know how things work. I would like to know what the legal yes. step should be, you know, for a Nigerian right now. Um, and for a, for, for, a banker specific, for a bank specifically, what would be the legal stance that it can take to sort of protect them from any backlash or punishment that may come because they still haven't heard from their regulator, the CBN, and they haven't heard from the federal government. But they do have customers, and they have to respond to their customers and provide their services. What can a bank do at this time? Well, to me, my, 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 my advice to us is to take the humble pie. Mm. Yeah, this, this, mm, this policy has not crashed at a crash on its face. And if the central bank has given a source landing, I expect that you take that advantage and quickly do the need for by doing what we expected by now that you have done the memo to all the banks that they should take the old notes and release all the old notes. And even by extension, that memo will now start to the general public that the old, the legal, the, the, the old notes still start as good as tender to December at the first 2023. Mm -hmm. But be that, mm -hmm. my own is that as a lawyer, I follow the law. And the law now is that that legal tender, those old notes are still legal tender. If I, unfortunately, I don't have a proof of it, to deliberately send to, to even cause for Allah, so that I will trigger the law. And what am I going is I will send it to somewhere and send that somebody should reject it. The bank will be out of this. If you have the old notes in your hand, go anywhere and send and use it to buy and to sell. It's as simple as that. And if anybody wants to reject it, you have the right to call the policeman that this one is disobeying the order of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Simple, shake a no wahala. Okay, so let's talk about the initial interim order that was given and what the president did. did exactly. So that should prepare us. Um, you know, he obeyed it conditionally. You know, so was even that, was it okay so that we can use to suggest what you we might do see for forward? <laughs> yes. I'm sure you are in the news, and you knew that we members of the legal community descended on the president heavily. What the president did was to call itself help or taking the laws into his hands. Because he's the president of the Federation of Government, he can take laws into his hands. Nobody is about the law. During the time of Sela Nicola Okuchi, the principle and the doctrine of paper infallibility have been erased. And of course, it can never come back again. The, king, okay, uh, 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 the principle there was that the king's court can do no wrong. But here we know that Gwari has done wrong by going to sit in on, on appeal against the judgment of the Supreme Court. And that's why the court now descended on him heavily that he's not a dictator. We are no more in a military era. We are in a civilian era. And there are rules and revolutions, there are power ascribed to people. And the central bank has a role to play. He, as the president, has a role to play. And of course, for your information, there are three arms of government the judiciary, the executive, and the legislature. The, the, the judiciary, and uh, the, the executive, both arms and us, of course, the parties, brought the case to the judiciary, which an arm of government who has jurisdiction over the matter. And the, the Supreme Court has adjudicated on the matter, one way or the other. The other option left for Kwari and the federal government was for them to uh, appeal, maybe two man and me. Not that they will not say, hey, they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are mad, they are stupid. And they now, now went and did the wrong thing. What Kwari did was wrong. And of course, I'm happy that right. he was called to where he was. Uh, it was popped down upon by the Supreme Court, and that's just right. it. So I, that's uh, picking and choosing. We want to put an end to picking and choosing by government yes, officers. The, the law is the law. If you still agree, because that's what the uh, uh, justice uh, uh, just said in the case of Chief uh, Judge Kujuku and legal state government, where legal state government was picking and choosing judgment to obey. It is not. Nobody is above the law. The law is made for everyone, both the rich and the poor, government and the government. So. Uh, the law is that the old NERA note stands until 20, uh, December 31, 2023. Right. And that's the law. All right. Finally, do you think um, Governor Emefele should step down or should he be sacked? No, let him wait. Let him wait. Let him wait. <laughs> let him wait. Let him wait. Let him wait. Let him wait. He's a monarchy. Let him wait. He shouldn't leave the place. <laughs> 
Is that sarcasm? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Barrister Wale Ogwade. We'll be speaking with him, sharing his thoughts on um, this Supreme Court judgment. All right. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we're trying to bring in another. Okay. <laughs> stay with us, we'll right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ha! Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports. A sprinkling of current affairs. Some very deep topical issues. And last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it. Women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anifula Fokuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger! Today, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Ha. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah. Wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1973. He said 73. He said 75. I couldn't. wasn't even born in 75. Damn. So will I drink out? Ah, you go drink. Go. <laughs> take, take, take. Make I go make I help you. Russian, Russian, Russian. No be half. Eh? Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Light in in no. Nepa Nepa Road. <laughs> Nepa Road. Nepa Road. In a Ah ah. First of all. My brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah eh omi omo fella omi omo anikula kpokuti ono pe kini kekele. It's my oldest one. Thanks for staying with us. So we're going to be having a guest very, very shortly, but I'm told that we have a caller to contribute to this conversation. Good morning, sir. Are you there? <coughs> okay, we lost the caller. Okay, so we're going to message. let's we take a few comments on social media. Yes, yeah, go ahead. Someone says, please help me remind, Ade Baptist says, help me remind their business, them, their businesses with, with perishable goods 
um, like eggs are suffering. If customers don't bring Naira to buy or there is scarcity of Naira, the whole stock is lost. There, is no, there are no insurance packages for these kinds of losses. The uh, impact on business is beyond imagination. And I remember a video, uh, a video showing um, uh, poultry where eggs had been harvested. Oh, yeah. During this so lockdown, sad. the guy was just you know, it was devastated. Yeah. Hmm. It was distraught. What was the word what, what to show? Mm. As you, That's it. Beyond, yeah. beyond uh, you know, I'm telling you. <laughs> and he was showing what he had harvested and how buyers could not come because, you know, they buy with cash and that week for them to adjust. And you know eggs, two weeks, quarter, quarter, yeah. Yeah. Also finish. farmers now, I mentioned so, it here. Of and yeah. Just to emphasize my economist, Kini would have known that small businesses yeah. like yeah. this, yeah. perishable businesses like this, yeah. would be affected exactly. because the switch would have given you that, given them time See, to get to that point. Stop and then Nima to talk because we are here in Lagos. But there are people because Mama Brown and Mama couldn't go back to Ekiti because they were afraid of how will I do cashless. Mm. So they, they, they didn't even they didn't want to face the reality that if I, when I get back home, I won't have to, I don't, I don't have to, to, to exchange with this, this, this new notes. Mm. So they just stayed here in Lagos where they know that they are covered. Mm. But okay. now with this help, they are hoping that in the next few weeks, they can start planning to go to a to visit. That our leadership can be quite clueless of what the realities of Nigerians can be. So <laughs> we were looking for people who understand our real grassroots issues. Yes. You sit in a nice fancy office and you think that that is Nigeria. Yes. Yes. Anyway, we have more tweets. We have Funam here who mm. says the presidential election is over now. Some Nigerians are now saying wait till after the governorship election the new Naira notes will be available. Again, I ask, what if the scarcity of the new Naira notes persists? Mm. Or Bala or Let me Lashi pause you for a second. Let me take Anthony is holding Anthony from Ikeja. Good morning, are you there? Yeah, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing this topic up. Uh, I listened to the lawyer who talked to you. He spoke fast. But what I'm trying to think is, we are not. They are telling us we are not in the in democracy. What we are witnessing now is a kind of militocracy. Mm. When you don't uh, obey the judgment of the Supreme Court, that is, uh, uh, you are calling for anarchy. And the consequences could be unintended, terrible. Because as I speak to you now, Nigerians, both civilians and military men, they are suffering. And anything can happen. We don't pay for the other, other side. You know what I mean? In that I did this, and the order the new currency ran side by side until they concluded the exercise. I don't know what is wrong with this man. Eh? I don't exactly know. Because if you look at the act of central bank, a person from a commercial bank, it's not supposed to be the governor of Central Bank. That is the intention of the act, setting up the Central Bank. You don't bring a commercial bank and you have to come ahead Central Bank. But there have been some breaches of interest. And uh, we don't regret that that is came from Central Bank and it didn't work. The body was removed. But what uh, a national is doing now, I think we will face some charges even after leaving there. It's too late to remove it or attack him. But he needs to face some a very harsh consequences for Nigeria. Thank you very much, Anthony. Yes. Not you are commenting. Let me take okay, it. Good. It says the Sibian governor, bigger than the law, that up to now he deliberately keeps has kept me till now without giving his boys in the bank's direction on mm. the delivered judgment. The man that <coughs> says, let's tarry a while. Considering that the policy came with the nod of Mr. President, who is out of the country at the moment. Oh, oh yes. Oh. At this event, the CBN governor prefers to brief the president in person. Oh. I'm sure that the president will do the needful for CBN to issue circular. I mean, oh. Are we in 1903? No, so he cannot. Can we send a message? Can we make a call? He cannot the, send a message. <laughs> 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 the, the, numbers, the numbers of businesses crippled because you know we're talking small businesses, and it seems like do you know that banking business? as you used to be, is no longer what it is now. Before. Some banks will tell you, I can allow you coming for your e-bank, but I don't want people outside to say I'm giving money. Mm, cash. And so they shut down. We, when you drive through the Badagri Expressway, I know several banks that, you know, it was a giving. You would just be seeing car <coughs> The people waiting outside are now begging the banks. They're not open. You'll be saying they're not open. You get to a bank, you have to travel another one. Even zonal branches were locking down. Mm. They were doing two days every week. Bankers no longer wear their fine suits to go to work. Who want that? Everybody's wearing mm. 
disguise clothes now to work. Did he think of this effect? Because you now, you know, when he responded, carry camera to their faces and say they were the ones who were not giving cash. He didn't address the limits. Mm -hmm. He didn't address the um, insufficiency of mm. the printed notes. Yeah. yeah. He did this same CBA governor, this MFLO, mm -hmm. he did not address the insufficiency of that note. He put people's lives at risk. Yes. We, we saw banks burn Ibado Ekiti. We saw banks burn yeah. down across. across the country. Yeah. He didn't respond. This yeah. person, uh -uh, he should not wait for his time to complete. Sanusi did not do up to this one when they advised him to go. Let me take this call company. from Tayo calling from Yano Paja. Good morning, Tayo. Are you there? Good morning. You're live. Everybody, good morning. Good morning, good morning sir. Yeah. Um, thanks for educating us uh, every day of this your program. Um, concerning this uh, Naira note, um, I want to say that uh, what the civilian government has done is a crime against humanity. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes. It's a crime against humanity. True. Imagine True. my 76 year old mom went to Bank in Oshobo after came for hours. Look at that. She was given 2,000 Naira. Hi. Look at that. And she had in that account, and my dad, what they had in, their, in the bank together was about 5 million. Nice. And they were only able to get 2,000 naira. So it's a crime against humanity. <laughs> now, about this election, or uh, whatever, before the president will speak, I can bet you anybody, they can get to the Because they still want to hold it for the governorship election. So that, well, they don't want it to be monetized. But whether we like it or not, we never had so much money in circulation. Oh, we lost Tyre. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you know, you know. I remember that Professor Wale Shoyinka was telling us many years ago when Buhari wanted to be president that he, the issue he had with with, with Muhammad Buhari at the time was like he's very, very, he's not very strong on the economy and he's worried about the people around him. And this is what we are seeing right now because mm -hmm. obviously he's been ill-advised concerning this policy. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, instead of them to take this humble pie and accept, although I said Buhari apologized to Kaduna, we yeah. but we would have loved the moment that Supreme Court. Oh, and all that came out immediately after there should have been a press briefing and that's the disconnect that our presence that we have with this administration yeah, we have the fact that you're not constantly talking to us letting us know that indeed we are at top of mind mm -hmm. nigeria's at top of mind for the president there's um a story in my place of the king ezonya wanam <laughs> ezonya wanam means the king who can do no wrong you could, who you could not advise mm. and he was kicked out Eventually. and embarrassed publicly at the end of the day as a leader you must listen as a leader you must look back there's what it calls reflection self-reflection review you must look back what i've done how far has it come how far has it impacted mm. did it give the same effect that i wanted it to a leader must have intention mm. in everything that you set out to do so the people are crying because the policies i have made is not working for them how do i redress this mm. how do i change it? nobody needs to be chasing you exactly. to change the mistakes that you have made mm. this is obviously a mistake from all ramifications and the fact that you are still strong-headed you're not doing anything about it just tells me who you are even in your home nobody but can correct you know our president has an economic team yeah. obviously Which that team was not even put um it was not carried along has no idea what is happening, what is happening. She and, she I'm, knew from this whole thing. and i'm so happy because in the beginning it was like uh, how can you say you didn't know anything about it but you know what i've seen in handling of this issue is that we have been scapegoating different people we have scapegoated the banks what would have happened is that we would have scapegoated they would have scapegoated the minister for yes. finance yes. being a woman i know oh, yes. it's so easy to look for the woman and put all the blame on her right. so i hope that the Not president so. when he finally comes i hope the the call will go through if he's so far away i have a lot of business with you go on a lot of are you there namesake. yeah i'm good alive go ahead hello good morning good morning sir good morning um i so much love your program thank you sir thank I you don't, i don't miss it every day um i want to make my contribution concerning this um Naira policy well to me it's a good policy but the implementation is the wrong thing mm -hmm. the implementation is so wrong the timing is so wrong we nigeria love what is fact, I mean, fact, I mean, fact is in all over the Western country. But the way it was implemented in Nigeria was wrong. That is one. Two, concerning the Supreme Judge, um, judgment, it's a welcome idea. But I want to help us, Nigeria. 
When we should say, come this a judgment, we should not expect central bank to immediately go ahead and do Central bank has the letter department of the CDM. I disagree. They also need to look, sit down together with the bank. I disagree with Mr. Olabisi. <clears throat> I disagree uh, with Mr. Olabisi because we're talking of human lives here and we're talking about livelihood. And when you're saying the longer you do not respond to this, you are con continually and um, allowing Nigerians or punishing Nigerians for this policy. And the reason why everyone says, oh, I like this policy, but I don't like how it's implemented because it doesn't have a human face. So that's why, even though it's nice on paper, we have not considered the human beings that this would affect. Mm. And that's why we're complaining right now. And then to say, on top of all this, we have a Supreme Court, finally, who's given a judgment that has put the human face to this. And we're saying, let's wait again. What happens to the perishable goods on the farms? What happens to the eggs that we're talking about? What happens to the people that have been walking to work back and forth because they don't have cash to pay for transportation? Should they just keep punishing themselves and keep going through this because we're waiting for a process of but, but do you, to go but back. Do you know what we're part of the conversation from the beginning? The fact that we're, we're even waiting is the bad thing. Because yes. we the people should know already that five day time to spare. We don't yes. have it. Because the fact that we're even waiting for a okay, the fact we should go ahead with we but do we have to wait? So the fact that even we the people we are even waiting for we shouldn't be somebody should pray should we shouldn't be we shouldn't be waiting at all. No, what's the time? So if they say give us two days to sort this out, to get back to you. That's different. There's, There's no, a time frame. No, no, I know it's still not okay. It's they not know okay. going through. But then you've had something. And then there's hope that after the two days, a miracle will happen. But how long do we wait? Because no, we never that about that in the beginning. Before, the never about Let me take and the, not tell the uh, vice president to take over. Not today. Okay. Not many. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is Now you have to Until you come back. Let me take Anthony from Iko. Good morning, Anthony. Yeah, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, first time caller. Welcome, welcome to the show. Yeah, it's a lot of always the one who listen to all of you. But it's quite unfortunate we find ourselves in this situation. Uh, this policy is not good at all. It's not good at all. And ordinarily, I, I know for sure, for this kind of policy, the modernity CBN is adopted to apply it should that be will be. It's mm. obvious, you know, personal uh, objective is attached to it, and that's why it's causing hardship to all of us all. Like you have all been saying, I just pray, or if there is anything one can really do to call either the Mr. President or the CBN governor to order. So that's mm, I'm tired of this. Thank you very much, no, Anthony. I'm tired of this prayer. So I, I expect that the National Assembly, who are supposed to be the lawmakers right now, should be banging the table and screaming. Heads must roll. Uh, where is the president? You have to come and answer to us. Where is the CBN governor? You have to come and answer. But they are still silent. And I know in their minds they've said they've done what they need to do. It's gone to the Supreme Court. But you don't end it there. When a court order has been given and nobody's making any moves to respect it, the um, National Assembly, the Houses of Assembly should be banging the yeah. table right now and heads and should be well, rolling. The government uh, shows us yes. that you people are, have the interest of Nigerians at hand. But everybody's silent, so to speak. No, the speaker. Governors are also very busy campaigning right now. You know, usually like I would have come to the people, please in the market, use the old news right now. Mm. Everybody is working on their own campaign for Saturday that they're not even thinking of Nigerians right now. No, you, no, you know, they want to force governors to do what they did in Kaduna where governors was not saying you spend your money. Yeah, you yeah. So so money. also no, people don't just, even have the old notes. Also for information, I know that the speaker it says that the speaker has spoken on, on this matter on the order yeah. that was given by the Supreme Court and he also says that the, he hails the governors of Kaduna Kogi and Zamfara State for challenging the federal government and the CBN for this. So they have spoken. Mm. But you know, I've been asking the question almost of everyone. So what happens? Mm. I've see, I saw a tweet here. Sorry, I've lost it. But he's saying that now is the time for people to do the next step, which is we go out and we spend our money. The local, the, the old we local. We will collect it. We no, we will collect we it. So that's what we're saying. We uh, will give the money to the market person. The market person will collect it. The farmer will collect it. The banks will collect it. All those people, we will go ahead and spend the money and, and listen to the Supreme Court. And the government has nothing else. It will have not any other option but to comply with Nigerians. Let, let, let me even say my personal experience on um, Sunday. I, I had to take my husband to the hospital and and I wanted to buy gum. And I paid with the old note because I discovered one old note somewhere in my uh, pocket. And I paid with it. And the 
uh, uh, Malam I bought from just se simply separated his new notes and paid me changing old notes as well. Mm. So these things are now happening. Give, yes, yes. We'll give do me, it. I give you, we'll exchange it. So Let's give you a comment practicing. on social media and then we, we wrap up very soon. Uh, Aunt Nam says, the Mephiles tenor shouldn't okay. have been Okay, well, one second, let me take this call. Good morning. Hello, hello you there? I'm so sorry, I lost that call. Sorry. So Aunt Nam says, uh, Mephiles tenor shouldn't have been renewed. He's the worst CBN governor in history. Um, have any more? Okay, okay, I am Olua Sheon says, <coughs> I am, I was number 329. I'm broken as I am like this. Bank has shut down payment. It's only those who have issues with ATM cards or transfers that you will see. Which way like this? This is crime against humanity. Oh, yeah, Tunji Oseni says, what is confusing me here is, if I may, is it CBN an independent body? Hmm. Why have the judges in the Apex Court failed to consult with the Apex Bank before they are rolling really? through? Yeah. Let justice in Apex Court not leave Nigeria in confusion, knowing okay. what and how to do what. Let me take Olabi. So Olabi, for me, better I'll come back to you. Good morning, Olabi. Are you there? Hello, good morning. You're live. Uh, Go ahead, please. Yeah, because now, um, what is really happening now is really affecting many businesses, affecting many families. Now, I would have to like call, by, uh, call out the uh, UBA. Now, they are deducting money from my account, going there, they are telling me they did not open. I have to be at Pataya Tere, that you be at Pataya Tere, all through on Friday. And I discovered that their staff are following the security side, coming out. I said, now, I didn't make any transaction, and you are deducting 100 k 100 k The money that I was supposed to use, deposit a tax for someone, up to now, as the money has been reversed. Hmm. Yeah, man, that, that, that's yeah. the average experience yeah. in many of us. can't yes, go to the bank to report what is going through. Yeah. Yeah. The banks are not opening. So I am Oluwa yeah. Shon to is a Nigerian saying, see, our leaders are so clueless about what is going on. I left my home after 6 a.m. today to queue at the bank. I was number 190, only for the security guy to come address us after I had waited for more than an hour. He made it clear that there's no cash. I was devastated. I then went to another bank where he is number 329. <gasps> he's broke and like he says, I'm broke like this. Bank has shut down payment. It's only those who have issues with ATM cards or transfers that they will see. Mm. Which way like this? This is crime against humanity. First of all, says, can't the federal, bank, <coughs> the federal government bring in, I can't see the federal government bring in all 500 and 1,000 back to circulation because the PMB is fixated on fighting corruption. Sad that PMB isn't doing enough to see that innocent Nigerians and businesses are dying. Welcome to our third APC recession if this chaos is not um, arrested. arrested. And that's the reality. Mm. That's where we are headed now. Now that we're hearing reports because that you've burnt some, I don't know how much of them happening. To... So you would see a four-sighted CBN governor, four-sighted economic team, saying this is where we are headed, oh, mm. Mr. President. Because all of us know that Mr. President never showed us a degree, oh. And then did he tell us he was an economist. He will not see this thing, so it's based on the advisory team. Oh, these people that are advising, please, for God's sake, we are begging advice you people. Well, no. Advice well, no. We are going there now. Oh. <laughs> when we reach there, finish now, you'll not be saying, you know, there's energy crisis around the world. COVID happened, but we will brought this one on top of ourselves. Mm. That's the honest truth. Mm. We could have said, oh, we have not changed our Naira, we've not redesigned our Naira, but we want to, we see that this is not, this is not the best time for it. Now that we are doing election, we want to do census, we want to change, we're seeing all of it yeah, at once on our sure. people, please, oh, help right. our people. Oh. All right, let me That's take, well, oh. let me what take this call from Kule from Ibado. Hmm. I do Hey. Kule, are you there? You're live. Yes, yeah, I'm here, I'm there. Good morning. Morning, sir. Good, well done, sir. Uh, well done, man. Well done, man. <laughs> For the good work you are doing, man. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Please, man. I want you to take note of what I wanted to say, man. And it is very important to... Please, man. See, my fear now, man, is our uh, new elected uh, president. President. Going yeah. to the Ado <laughs> Villa. That is my fear. I always have it. Of that environment, man. That as a villa, as long, long time ago, it's not a, it's not an ideal place for a policy that will be, um, uh, you know, where the, uh, the policies of government 
will be running over this country. Never and never. No any good thing will come out of that place. If that remains, remain. if that place should remain it, as a place where the policies of government will be coming out, no any government will succeed in that environment. I'm telling you, Jesus man. Go and take note of this thing. It is well. But he's like so he's saying that the actual work in itself uh, is somewhat positive the spirit that is stopping good policies yolu yolu say see let ashiwa do not go to that and so rock the spirit there hmm. i used to make them disconnected from the people once you enter the spirit will just possess the person jesus i said ah yolu See, I've actually heard that narrative. Well, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not right. It's not, it's not, a, not true. I don't it's not, it's not, you can't prove that. Mm. Yeah, you can't substantiate it anyway. Anything, so right? I, I can't prove anything, but substantiating is another business. This is what we are using to substantiate. You can't substantiate the fact that <laughs> well, there's always been that myth mm. that also work is possessed with spirits. Some experience. That also work has a lot of mm. demonic influences. We've heard that in the past. From experience. But we are trusting. Yes. That the first lady, who is a spirit filled redeemer, <coughs> will scabash and subdue. I see what you all. We'll see. I mean, we we'll have hope to subdue all the demonic influence over that rock. That's our hope. That's okay, so there, there's no demonic influence. I just feel that. I'm just saying now yeah, that just in case. Uh, I, there isn't. Um, our problem has always been that we do not just follow. We, 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 we let us over the problem to somebody else. So, yes, <laughs> is the demon? Yes, there are no demons. <laughs> they are just people that need to pay attention to Nigerians. Don't get distracted by the politics. Don't get distracted by the cabals. You know, don't get distracted from anything that does not um, reflect the Ni what Nigerians are going through. If anyone gets there and can just keep their head on straight and focus on only the things that matter. We will not talk about demonic influences is the, and yet. demon, no, and you can the, your head straight. Thank you. Is is demon demon let, straight. let me even say this. Yeah. Uh, there are uh, foreigners who come to our land to get jobs, mm. and before they move into office, they bring their people mm. for prayers and cleansing, for yeah. shui and yeah. all that. Most of these offices in yeah. VI yeah. that are uh, handled by so Indians. Indians, they bring their people to do all of that. So the uh, president's wife Next. as well, elect, can bring his prayer warrior, yes. and prayer warriors to come and you know Sanct cleanse and yeah. pray and yeah. sanctify yeah. and all that. No, no, it's also so okay mm. to do that because the spiritual controls the physical. Remember, remember the war room. These things that we do, like remember the war room. room. Okay, there has, there, to be, there has to be a war room. room. There's nothing wrong in going into a place yes. and sanctifying it yeah. or praying over it, but it's not because we have some. Demons. Okay, so we're advising yeah. that there should be a war room in yeah. Asso Rock mm. where we are scabashing, where the demons know. There should be, there has to be a gatekeeper a, for Asso Rock. We have a vice president who is a redeemer, a pastor, a redeemer. So I don't even understand this conversation. Oh, that's true. There's a church in that place. See, forget this. Oh. And we've had others who are Muslim. Our, our president is also a staunch um, Muslim. We don't have that kind of issue here. We're only Our speculating issue. now. No, let's let's enjoy that. the conversation. Let's, let's enjoy the conversation. No, no, no. This We're is not really this this was was not joking. Are we not Nigerian? Please. There's a spirit side and there's a physical side. Please, let us not be counting us. Something controls the spirits. The spirit realm controls the physical. Which does not mean that African spirit is always negative. The spirit affects everywhere. Of course. But in Africa, our spirit towards our prosperity. See that as well. I think power corrupts. Okay. Absolutely. That's mm. all. When you enter inside, power, you see power. Power and a spirit. You see power. I have a call for Mushi. Let me just take kind of our final caller this morning, please. Yeah. Hope they're not discussing spiritual matters. <laughs> Good morning, Kendi. <laughs> Are you there? Thanks for calling. Where are you? I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> You're alive. I'm laughing. Good morning. It's Good nice to be with you guys today. Thank you. Good morning. Well, I've tried oh, thanks for telling us. See, yeah. There is something that has always bothered me mm. about the issue in our country. Mm. I see Nigeria, we are not part of the world. God created us specially. Mm. So when we are seeing international best practice, it gets to me that, no, we, we shouldn't follow. We are Nigerians and others. Mm. We are specially being, God created us specially. We should see ourselves the way God sees us. Mm. Until we do that, something will work very well for us. Mm. People can't come from outside the country and we we'll raise them above ourselves. Mm. We can't see people's policy and say we want to be the most way. Have we truly tried ourselves to know who we truly are? This CBS man, they make me that you don't need a world before. 
if you if sit you. down with himself and find himself, hey, yeah. you may even try to find the post is old. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kendi. Wisdom okay. will not fail you, Kendi. Wisdom will not fail you. <laughs> All right, let's give you comments and then we wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. comments? Ah, Mount Rushmore is saying the president has decided to inflict pains on Nigerians at his parting gift. This is very, this is his very last opportunity to do so. Uh, Fiona says, powers deal, <coughs> especially in third world countries. But if you know who you are, you'll survive. Toby Martin Mark, says, okay. <laughs> I believe there is no demon. We oh, Nigerians uh, believe prayers is the key, but it has not opened any doors in Nigeria. <laughs> Knowledge and love is the key. Thank you, Toby what Martin. Is, Andrew thank says, you. What is that? I missed that. What is this? He says that we Nigerians believe that prayer is the key. He says there's no demon. Oh, okay, okay. Now we believe that prayer is the key and the key not the open Never door. Never For Nigeria, that <laughs> knowledge and love is the key. Mm. Andrew in Switzerland says, agreed, Miriam, there are no demonic influence. It's a mindset thing. In 1960, mindset. Okay, it's 1960 mindset versus <laughs> Nigeria 2015. 2015. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's change our yeah. mindset, too. Mm. We have to. Right. Mm. Yeah. Um, this one and says, those that will tell you stories of how yeah. they, they were facing demons in Nassau mm. Rock. Mm. Can't, we can't, we can't uh, verify their story. Because they are putting the box in the tent. <laughs> 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 we can't, can't verify their stories. But they will say that when, as they enter like this, they just feel one sense of thing oh, that enters them like mm, this. Excuse. And then so I can answer that there's a story that you've told. Wrong. I'm, sure it's untrue. I'm sure it's untrue. I'm just saying that's what they say. Mm. You know, they always say something. There was a story you've shared with us. I don't know if it was privately, so I don't know. Where a man of God was excited that somebody oh, had yes. gotten a political appointment yes. so that he can put some yes. prayers mm. together, curate yes. some prayers, yes. especially for that. He you was know excited. that people have used this as a business mm. gimmick. So please, there are no demands. Of Go it. and do your best. I got <laughs> yes, I was. Okay, we have to wrap up. Thank you very much, ladies. I think that's all we can take yeah. on today's show. But the real crux of our conversation this morning was about the Naira uh, redesign policy, where the Supreme Court's judgment said it clearly. Now, these old notes should remain legal tenders till the 31st of this year, 2023. Therefore, we expect to begin to, begin to spend the money. However, people are a bit reluctant because they are yet to hear from the president or the, uh, the central bank. So we are hoping that one of them should speak to Nigerians so that okay. people, especially okay. because I can go to the bank, but the problem is that the bank might not respond mm -hmm. because they've not heard from their regulator. So it's important that Mr. CBN Emiefele kindly come Look. forward and say something so that your okay. bankers can begin to um, release some of this money back into the system. That's all we can take on today's show. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.